series of videos and in this first video in the series we're looking at the reactivity series so your first question may well be just what is the reactivity series well the reactivity series is a list of metals in order of their reactivity towards other substances so metals vary in their reactivity here for example is potassium now potassium is a metal that reacts very violently with water if you ever get a chance go on youtube and put in there potassium water there's some great videos showing what happens in that reaction so potassium's really really reactive on the other hand you've got copper now copper is very unreactive even with acids it doesn't react which is just as well because we use copper in the um, water pipes in our houses so it doesn't react with the water and we're very very happy with that so here's the reactivity series now reactivity series it does not include all the metals okay it just includes the more common ones so very reactive the top of reactivity series potassium is the most reactive sodium is next and calcium then you've got some fairly reactive ones called a glimpse of then we've got magnesium aluminium and we've got zinc these are fairly reactive we'll come back to carbon in just a moment then you've got iron lead and copper and these are not very reactive at all as you mentioned copper there doesn't react with acids and finally very very bottom you've got metals that are very unreactive in fact not at all reactive so gold we make jewellery out of gold, so I'm doing the washing up at home. My gold ring doesn't react at all with water, which is just as well. Now, mention carbon and also hydrogen. Now, both of these are included, even though they're non-metals. So, carbon and hydrogen are non-metals, but it's very useful to know their position in the reactivity series. And particularly for carbon, we'll find out in just a moment. Now, we can use position of a metal in the reactivity series determine how the metal is extracted from its ore. What does this mean? Extracted from its ore. Well, it means getting the pure metal from rock. Now an ore is a rock containing a metal or metal compound. I'll give you an example in a moment. Often these metal compounds are metal oxides and just so happens here we have a picture of iron oxide. So this ore contains a compound iron oxide. It's a rock and because it contains a metal it's known as an ore. Another example is aluminium oxide. So this rock here contains aluminium oxide and therefore it's called an ore. So how do we get these out of their ores? The top ones, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, everything above carbon, these are pretty reactive metals and in order to extract those from the ores, from the rocks they're in, we have to use electricity. So metals above carbon in the reactivity series have to be extracted what we call electrolysis and this requires electrical energy so it's pretty expensive. Other extreme we've got gold and silver and these may be found just in their pure state. So you've often, I'm sure you've seen, people panning for gold in streams and rivers because gold can be washed out the rocks and there it is in its pure state, not at all reactive. Now between these you've got metals that are less reactive than carbon, so zinc, iron, lead and copper. Now these are all less reactive um, than carbon, less carbon, zinc, iron, lead, copper, all less reactive and we can extract those by heating them with carbon because what carbon does, it takes away oxygen. So here, iron oxide that we saw a moment ago, we can heat it with carbon, the carbon in effect pinches the oxygen from iron oxide leaving pure iron and carbon dioxide gas. Now it's got a complex process involving blast furnaces but this is the simple equation for it here. Right, time for keywords. So reactivity series is arrangement of metals in decreasing order their activities most reactive at the top, least at the bottom. An ore is naturally occurring rocks that contain metals or metal compounds in sufficient amounts. It's pointless trying to extract them if they were, they're in tiny amounts. They've got to be um, worthwhile extracting them. Okay, so copy these keywords now into your vocab sheet.
Well, that's the end of this Key Stage 3 science video. Thanks ever so much for watching. I really do hope you like what you see. And if you do like what you see, why not visit my website at www.keystage3sciencecourses.com. There you'll find over 120 science videos you can subscribe to. So, once again, thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.